Every one of us have a purpose. Every one of us is important in this life. You are just as important as the president because we are serving someone who is bigger than the president. This is a different type of living. This is a different type of, of, of life where we gotta understand our purpose in life. This morning, I wanna start with something very simple. You guys have heard it before. You heard, of it. you heard it in the song where they said, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. And this morning, I'm gonna talk about the light of the world. The light of the world. Jesus said, and this is not on the screen, but Jesus said in the book of John chapter, first John chapter two, verse seven, in the New Living Translation, it said, Dear friends, I am not writing a new commandment for you. Rather, it is an old one you have had from the very beginning. This old commandment to love one another is the same message you have heard before. So, talking about the light of the world, you've heard it before. We heard so many times that we are the light of the world. Some things is just a reminder. We already know what we get to do. It's like a, a parent who having a, uh, a child and being told to wash the dishes. When I get back, I, I want to see the dishes washed and the, ki the kitchen cleaned up. Even when she get back, if, even if they did not wash the dishes, it doesn't mean that order that they have given has been canceled out. In other words, we have heard so many times that Jesus is coming back. And some of us have lived a good many years, but today where we're standing, even while we was yet, the Bible say, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb, and I have ordained you. And today where we are standing, from the time he knew us until now, we had a purpose, and that purpose still stands. We were ordained to be the light way back then. And today, until the time comes for us to leave this earth, we are still commissioned to be that light. And there's no one in this world can say that they, there's not a dark place that their light can shine, cannot shine. There's so many opportunity in this world right now for our light to shine. See, this, we are the answer to the world's problem. Because like Brother James said before, the kingdom of God is in us. And the kingdom of God is the light that man is seeking for. It's the light that men need today to overcome problems, to get rid of those suicidal thoughts, to be prosperous in every way. We have the answer to the problem of the war. But like I said, because it is a reminder, we have to remind ourselves and remind each other because Pastor Mark mentioned it earlier, sometimes our minds tends to shift. We forget our purpose. And we forget for the moment we are so caught up and we are so involved in so many other things that we forget who we are. We forget that we are the light. Instead of bringing light to the person that fall by reaching down and pulling them out, we begin to talk bad about that person, and how, uh, it just pushing them farther and farther away. We are the light. So let us look at the first definition of a light. A light is something that makes vision possible. Think about all the lost people in this world. And again, I love what Brother James read earlier. The man was there with Elijah, he, doesn't, he wasn't blind. But what Elijah was seeing, he couldn't see that. And there was another uh, type or another kind of eyes that he needed to see through for him to see the horses all around the mountains. He wasn't blind. The light is something that makes vision possible. Jesus Christ was, was um, referred to as the light of this world. And he was also referred to as the living word. When you hear a word, it brings understanding and it brings direction that help us to go into the right direction and accomplish some things. 
And he said, what does it mean to have a vision? If the light is something that makes vision possible, vision is we, with vision is having a, having a vision means we have a clear sense of purpose. It means now you understand what is your purpose in this world. There is so many people that call themselves Christian. We're not demeaning anyone's. We're just making a point. But yet still does not understand their purpose. I have for a long time thought when I've got saved, I'm waiting until Jesus come back and we are going to heaven. So I try to find the safest place not to curse, not to steal, not to do all these bad things because I want to go back with him when he comes. Amen. Not understanding that I have a purpose in this life. Not understanding, as the scripture said, a man who tried to save his life will lose it. Not understanding because there is something going on in Atlanta doesn't mean that I can't witness to someone over there. Instead of finding that safe place, that safe zone, trying to wait until we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. You see how we can be walking in a sense of disobedience? Because he said, you are the light of the world. We are here with a purpose. And so many times we forget our purpose. John chapter 8 verse 12 says in, in King James, then spake, Jesus unto, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The light, which is the word of God, Jesus Christ, came so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. Because so many of us was living in darkness before I received that light. I thought so, so bad about other people. <laughs> Not understanding the Bible says, what you do to the least of one of these, I'm doing it unto God, but yet I'm praising God and then I'm speaking bad about my brothers and sisters. The Bible plainly said, a man who does not love does not know God. And we can be drifting through life thinking that we're on that road, that, that narrow road that leads to life and also we are missing it. Because we don't understand our purpose. The Bible said, sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Saul has lost the kingship because of his disobedience. He, 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 began, he tried to blame it on the people and say, the people is the one who made me do this. God told him to go and destroy everything. Don't bring anything back. And he brought back whatever he feel like doing. He did what he feel like doing. And he lost the kingship because of that. Every one of us have a purpose. Every one of us is important in this life. You are just as important as the president because we are serving someone who is bigger than the president. Yes, yes. This is a different type of living. Yes. This is a different type of, of, of life where we got to understand our purpose in life. We are not here just by chance. We are not here just by accident. We have been ordained. The Bible said he knew us even before we was conceived. And he had a plan for us. Every one of us. John chapter 12 verse 30, 36 says, Put your trust in the light while there is still time. He said, Then you will become children of the light. After saying these things, Jesus went away and was hidden from them. He said, put your trust in the light. And as we trust in the light, guess what? We have been transformed. We are now part of that family. And that's why he said in the next scripture, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. I love using scriptures to make my point. Because I don't want anyone to go away thinking that, well, he, he, he's saying all these things, but where is he going with this? I love using the scripture like that. And one of my saying is this. If you're going to buy a car, get the manual to repair that car. Because if you, if you try to take a, a Toyota Corolla manual to repair a, 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 one of the fastest cars in the world, what? Uh, Lamborghini? Lamborghini? Lamborghini. <laughs> I get it right. Y'all hear me out there. Yeah. 
If you take a, a Toyota Corolla manual to repair that, it will cost you a whole lot of money because that's what it is. It's the same thing with our life. For us to prosper and be in good health and to be obedient to the word of God, we must stick to the Bible. That's our manual. And it says right here, it says in Matthew 5, 14, 15, it says, you are the light of the world. See, we are now. Before he said he was, now he already transferred the authority to us. Because he said he's going back to be with the Father. Now you and I are in control. We are now the light. We are now taking the torch and taking it to others. He said, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop cannot be hidden. No one lights a, can, a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed in a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. So look at the world as, as the house. We are the light. Now we got to go and give light to everyone that is in the house. Your gift can be your light. The Bible talks about the man who have, who, who have that gift of, um, of giving, to give generously. The one who have the gift of speaking, he must speak as though God himself is speaking through him. Our gift is our light because we are the one who is showing the world what God looks like. And in this day and age where children are killing their parents. And come on now. You got to understand the Bible said for, parents, for children to obey their parents in the law so that their life can be long. Look at the disobedience. And the Bible talks about those things that will happen in the last days. Men will be lovers of themselves. But still he did not say the light should stop shining. Because they say the light that is lit have to be on the candlestick. It cannot be put under a basket because the light is there to give light to everyone in the house. So why are we drawing back? Why are we so afraid to go to some events? They, they have an event a couple of um, days in Texas. So packed that eight people get killed. I'm sure you guys heard about that. But call a prayer meeting and see how many people show up. They wasn't worried about COVID-19. They wasn't worried about that. But you have believers who have the light, who have, the, the as Brother James said, the, 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 the God living inside of us. Yeah. The power of God. The Bible said we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. The same healing power lives in us. But yet we are so afraid to go to places. We are drawing back. We are the light. Even with our conversation, your conversation becomes the light to those that are hearing it. Because when they begin to hear what you're saying, it's telling them, oh, it's okay to do what they're doing. But when they, when they heard what we are saying as far as how God has brought us out, how God has helped you to find your purse, how God has delivered you so many times, and then now they can trust God. Instead of worrying, they can now call upon the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I need you to help me to find my purse. Holy Spirit, I need you to help me to find this and that. Now they understand because they are hearing. But we are claiming that we are a child of God and there's nothing wrong with that. But we got to remember our purpose. We got to remember the light has to stay lit until the one who, who, who owns the light feel like it's time to turn it off. It's just like you in your house. When you're in your house and you have your light on in the living room, it stays on until you are ready to turn it off. You are in control of that. We are the light. This is the time that we got to shine. We have a, a perfect time right now. And even the way we love each other, even the way we love each other, it is a light shining to the world because now it's like a dog eat dog world because people are thinking that we are running out of food. People are thinking that there is not enough money in the world. People are thinking that healing stopped taking place. People are thinking that there is no good marriages anymore. Because of what they are seeing. They are the kind that they believe what they see. Like the Bible said, blessed is the man who believed and did not see. They got to see everything for them to believe. And what, who they're looking at? They're looking at me and you. So that's why I said from the beginning, this is not something new. 
when we talk about the light of the world, this is just a reminder of who we are. It's just a refresher to remind us to come back. If our mind is drifting, to get back into, the, to, into your lane and to be who God calls you to be. Because in that end, the Bible says, he plainly said to, to, um, to those that were disobedient, when you didn't do it to this one over here, you didn't do it to me. And what you did to this one over here, you was doing it to me. Now come and enjoy what I have prepared for you. This is no time to play. We got to know who we are. We are the one who is carrying the answer to the world's problem. People are getting sick because they are worrying. When we can show them if you find that peace in God, how you can be healthy, how you can be strong, how your mind can be relaxed, how you can enjoy a relationship, how you can enjoy your friendship, how you can enjoy all these good things that he has for us to enjoy. But we allow ourselves because of something that happened, maybe it's you lost a car. So what? You can get another one. If they take it back because you, you can pay for it, fine. But still trust God because he is a God that can replenish. He can double up. He can give you two, yes. two more. Yes. And it's just material things. If you lost the house, so what? If you lost your finance, so what? People are committing suicide over these things. When they have the creative, the, the creative power of God that lives inside of us, we have the in, infinite intelligence. Because if we take off the, this old mind and now we put on the mind of Christ, think about the things that we can do with the mind of Christ. Think about the wisdom and knowledge that is available to us. So why are, are, why are we so afraid to even start a business? We don't even want to attempt it. Look at what the world is doing. It, they are charging us three and four times the taxes and all these different things. And when you go to borrow money from the world, they don't care who you are. They are in there to make money. They charge you five and six times more interest. Sometimes you pay for that one thing about five or six times. I'm saying it's life. But what about those who can start a business and be fair? And show the world, just like Chick-fil-A, they don't open on Sundays, but they're making billions of dollars. And people are mad at them because God is blessing them every day. They allow their employees to go home every Sunday and go to church. And you have those that are open seven days, 24-7. I've seen a sign on a, a building that said, open eight days, 24-7. I want to know how he did that. <laughs> I'm seriously... I just want to know how he's doing that. Eight days. He's so serious about making money. He opened it eight days, 24-7. <laughs> and Chick-fil-A doing it six days a week and allowing their employees to go home on Sundays and go and worship God. I remember a time where I grew up in the British Virgin Islands. And on Sundays, nothing opened. That was back in the days. Now everybody got fancy now when they begin to copy everything that goes on in the United States and things like that. But there was a time where everything that shut down and even during the week from 12 to 1, everybody take lunch. School, everybody just take lunch at the same time. But now, things have changed. And even on Sundays, they want you to work on Sundays. And they don't care what you have to do as long as you show up. We are the light. We should, we should be able to show the world what the word of God is saying. When it says, beloved, I wish above all that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. Why? Because we put our trust in the light. And the light continues to provide for us abundance beyond there was a time when the church was the one of the most powerful entity in the world. I remember as a young boy where we drive past the church and whoever playing that music, they turn it down. Because they used to see, they see deliverance taking place, healing was taking place, all these different things was taking place. They see family structures were strong, whether you like it or not, you got to go to church Sunday morning. 
I already kicked and screamed so many times, but that didn't make any difference. I was in there. My mom said, you got to go, you got to go. But I thank God for my mother that used to bring us into her bedroom and had us kneel down at her bed and pray every night and every morning. And I love what the British school was doing. When, if you didn't get it at home, they give it to you in school. They have this big hallway, all, all the children, all the kids come in the morning. They call it the assembly. And they sing, they read scriptures, and they pray, and you go to class after that. If he wasn't getting it at home, when it's time to go home for lunch, they make you say your grace. Everybody lined up, say your grace, go. When you come back from, uh, from eating your lunch, you said uh, your, your, your thank you again, your other grace, and then you go into your class. And those was the things that kept me as a young man because I began to travel when I was young. I began to travel. I work, began to work for this big shipping company, 18 years old. I mean, I'm thousands of miles away. The first time I hit the docks in Florida, I'm sitting there almost for half a day crying because I'm by myself. The young man, that's the first time I ever traveled that far. And I could have gotten in so many things, but I did get into some things. And today, that's why I love working with young people because some of the things that I've gotten into, it has scarred me for years. Those movies and all those things, going into those places, watching those movies, those images, because your eyes is like a, it's, it's like a camera. Your memory is so sharp, so sharp, and then you have people saying, I can't remember this and that. No, no, no. But you can remember all the bad things. You can remember all the bad things, but when it comes to the good things, how you can't remember that? 80% bad and you, can, you can't even remember 20% good. But I thank God for what my mother did because that's what really kept me. That's the guidance that I had. She was the light to me. She taught me. And there was a times when I went through in my life uh, a, 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 a divorce. Never wanted it. And not pointing the finger at uh, uh, my ex or anything. But it was hard because you, lo you lost house, you lost your 401k, all these different things. But every time I thought about doing something, I hear that voice saying, well, you know, do you think a child of God would do something like that? And it's because of the light, my mother, what he taught, what she taught me, that kept me from stepping over that line. And today we got to be that light. We are the light to those who are at the brink of committing suicide. We are the, brink, the light for those that are go, getting ready to get married. You, you married, it's, it's a good thing, but we need guidance. Like it said in the book of Titus, chapter two, that the older man should teach the younger man and the older women should teach the younger women. We have gotten away from that so far. Because we are saying we don't want to meddle in people's business. Now, if we are saying that, basically we are saying, just like what Saul said, is the people who made me disobey, uh, disobey you, Lord. We're going back to Saul's days. The Bible said that we should teach one another. The older women got to step up and teach the younger women. The older man got to step up and teach the younger man. There is no excuse. It's like you have a light and now you're putting in a basket over that light because now the excuse becomes a basket that now is extinguishing that light. Think about if the, 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 the older men and the older women step up and do what they have to do. I'm not saying everybody's going to listen to you. We know that. But sometimes we use that as an example not to even try. Jesus said, the Bible said he left the, the 99 and he went after the one. What about the one that is in the crowd that wants to do good, but still being influenced by, her fr by his or her friends and still being drawn away, but in his heart, he wants to do good? What about that one? But when we draw back because of the other four, what are we going to tell God? How are we going to explain that? I want, to, I want you to go over to the, the slide, the one with the picture. Because for time's sake, yes, we're going to skip some of those. A couple of years ago, I was driving. I just picked up, I got another truck. 
And I just picked up this truck right there. It might not look like a truck, but that was the cab for a truck. And I picked it up in South Carolina, and I was heading down to Savannah. And I know all my life that God had a calling on my life. Because uh, you guys heard me say it before right here at Kingdom Rock. There's a time when I was in, in party, I was in a club, and I, I paid my $20 going, and I'm, I get my bunks on, you know, my, I'm, I'm right in the zone. My bunks is right there in the zone. And you know, living in Florida, and who, if you guys ever, any one of you lived in Florida, you know how that Tootsie Roll was hot down in Florida. That Tootsie Roll, you know? I got my Tootsie Rolls right there in the, yeah. yeah well, that was in the past, I'm dancing, I'm, I'm being truthful. But then in the middle of all that, I mean, I, I like a sandwich between two, you know, that tits and rolls. In the middle of all that, I'm hearing that voice of saying, you know, if God comes right now, you're going to hell. <laughs> Several times, I still, well, I still went back with my friends. Get the tits and roll on again. And the same thing came again. You know, if God comes right now, you're going to hell. And after a while, a couple of times, I walked home because we used to, you know, ride together so that we don't have all the cars so we can talk and ride. And I walked, I, la I leave my friend there and I walked home. I walked home because I know um, I, I wasn't supposed to be there. And I know there was a call in there and I wasn't supposed to be there and I left them there and I walked home a couple of times because I can hear that voice, so I know that there was a call in there a long time ago, but I try to run as much as I can. I try to run as much as I can. And after a while, it's like I said, Lord, you know what? This is it, I'm, I'm going in. And I went in, and I never looked back. And I still talk to my friends today, most of them never went in. They're still out there, but because I know he had a calling on my life, and as I picked up this truck back there in South Carolina, and I was heading to Savannah, and one of the tires blew out. Now, it might not look to a truck, look like a truck to you. You got to really look good to see where the cab was and all that stuff. But as I was going to South Carolina, one of the tires blew out. And immediately, the whole truck caught in fire. The whole truck caught in fire and stopped burning. And I find myself standing up in the cab of the truck. And because it was a new truck, I was like basically in unfamiliar territory. Because you know, you, if you're driving a, your car that you have for a year or six months or whatever, you know where everything at. You, could, you, you close your eyes, you could turn the wipers on everything. But I didn't know where nothing at because I just picked the truck up. So I'm walking back and forth in the cab. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying, Lord, no, 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 please, Lord, no. And then I began to see my family, my wife and my kids, I see that flash before my eyes. So I walked back over to the other side of the truck in the cab. And I walked back over again. And then I said, well, this is, I began to inhale that smoke. And I said, this is it. This is it. And then I said, Lord, no, please, I cannot allow my family to come and identify my body with me stand up burned up right here in this truck and then I felt that window I don't know I know he spoke to me I put my hand and the window was broke and that's when I went out of the window head first and with all that curtain all and, and burn the feet because the 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 flow of the truck was so thin they make them thin because they you can carry more weight and things like that and everything was burning my foot was burning and uh, inhaling the smoke and then I went out the window. And even when I get out the window to the ground, I wasn't crying. The only thing that was coming out of my mouth was, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because I went through the bushes and come back around so I could be a little way. And everything started exploring and all that stuff. And what you see right there is the whole cab of that truck that burned up. That's what didn't burn was what couldn't burn. That's what left. But you see, with all that, I say that to say this, as being the light of the world, fear could, have been, could be the basket that would put my candle out. Fear now to go back into another truck, to even drive another car, I could allow fear to be the factor that would keep me from going forward. How many times I'm driving down the road and thoughts come into my mind, but I have to, I have to pluck those thoughts up and do, do not allow those thoughts to grow. Amen. 
because it's trying to t- get me to, to, to live my life in fear again so that I won't drive again, so that I won't take care of my family, so that I won't be a blessing to someone else. Fear. So there's so many things in your life that can stop your light from shining if you allow them to. But we have control over those things. We have control over the enemy. Fear is an enemy of mine. It could be an enemy of yours. It can be anything else. The Bible said those who have the, the um, when God gives you something to speak, say it, say it with all your might. If you have the gift of speaking, speak as though God himself is speaking through you. But if you allow fear to keep you back, you will never get that message out to the one who's at the brink of giving up. Who's at the brink of walking away from a relationship. Who's at the brink of doing something that they did not want to do, but they did not have someone there to help them or to even speak a word to encourage them. And that's why we got to remind, we got to be reminded that we are the light of the world because we are carrying what the world is seeking. The world is looking for love. It's looking for peace. It is looking for joy. We have everything that we can show them how to get that joy, how to live that peace, peaceful life. We can point them to the word of God that will help you. To get to that place of peace, knowing that all your provision, all your supply has already been provided for. The Bible said in Romans 8.32 that he did not withhold his only son from us. Won't he give us everything else? That's a question he's asking every man. And we are the one that can answer that question better than anyone. Because we are there. We have. And once we have it and we we display it, then they can see. And our life now becomes a light to those that are in darkness. Those that do not know. The Bible said, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. That light will shed light on some things in our lives or in their life to let them understand, look, you don't have to act that way. You don't have to respond that way. You don't have to stay in that position. You can get out of there if you only believe, if you only trust in the light. Because the light, the Bible says, is the life of man. It brings life. It gives life. And we are here to live life, and he live it more abundantly. So it doesn't have to be a sermon that you never heard before. It could be something as a refresher. Because there's times that we all drift. There's so many things that are going through our mind, so many things that we are facing with, that sometimes the, the main thing that we need to do, we overlooked it. But we got to understand, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Still go, it, it, where we used to help someone change the tire, where we used to help someone daughter who's, who, who's uh, stranded on the, on the street, give them a ride, and they don't have to worry about us, us molesting them and things like that. It is still there. We still can be that light. We still can be the one to encourage others. We still can be the one who will pray and believe with others. Because they're so, they, yeah, they're hurting. They, their child might do something wrong, but sometimes it might be just a first, first offense. It doesn't mean that we have to give up on them. Amen. Pastor Mark talked about offense earlier. Are we offended when, we, when someone come, in, come into the room? We are that light. And I thank God for places like the food banks and the men of God, the men and women of God, those who are going out in the street, those whose light is still shining. Because the Bible plainly said, what you did to the least of one of these, you are doing it unto me. And when you don't do it to the least of one of these, you didn't do it to me. So in other words, I have no, no relationship with you. I have nothing in common with you. Because basically, according to the Bible, you are, you are not one of mine. And again, like I said, if you're going to buy a car, get the manual for that car. And if your life, if you are claiming to be a child of God, get a Bible. Because that's where our instruction coming from. So in other words, there won't be no but. The buts will be out of that because you know our references is from the word of God. So keep being that light. Don't allow anything to extinguish your light. 
because that's what we were made for. We had a purpose before we came into this earth and we were not an accident. We were not an accident. Paul allowed others to get him into that place of disobedience that allowed him to lose that kingship. All he had to do was to do what he was told to do and come back. But he allowed others to influence him. As much as we love friends, mama, daddy, and everybody else, when it, said, when it all said and done, it's our responsibility to allow our light to continue to shine. Because God said he would never leave us nor forsake us. He's always there. His word is inside of us. But at that day, in that time, if we don't allow our light to shine, what good is our purpose? So as we close right now, we are waiting for Pastor Mark to come. <laughs> I just want to thank you guys again for, for being here. Amen. And for giving me that opportunity to minister to you as uh, I first feed myself when it comes to the Word of God. I feed myself first. I don't just put something together and say, hey, this is for you. I, I make sure that I'm included too because I'm not exempt. I am also the light. And what good would it be if I lead everybody to the light and me myself is not in there? It wouldn't make any sense. Amen? Amen. Thank you guys. You guys have blessed.